up is um, Dario Freddy, who will uh, talk about uh, doing easy Qt development on embedded devices. Hello, Welcome. everyone. Thanks, Yuna. Uh, so I will skip the introduction useless about myself, and I'll go straight to the meat. Uh, usually these days, whenever you develop for embedded devices or software, you have a problem. You usually have a good idea or a good application to develop on, maybe on stuff like this, a Raspberry Pi or any other ARM-powered device. But you usually face this problem when building a simple application, as you need to build a whole stack of solutions from kernel, middleware, uh, whatever supports your solution, uh, remote control, you name it, plus your application, which is usually should be as easy as doing stuff on a smartphone, which is what developers want after all. And you need, of course, to focus on your product. So what is the solution? Well, uh, my company, which is Ispilata, has been doing pretty much only this for the last months, and it's called Himera. What is Himera? Uh, well, it's, uh, first of all, a Greek god, or something like that. We like mythology, so we name things after this kind of gods. And most of all, it's an operating system based on Linux, first of all. More than that, an SDK plus tooling for creating applications and managing your session and a remote cloud, web, you name it, solution for managing your device. All of this is what we call Himera. So what's inside all of this? Uh, we build everything from the kernel upwards, given that the kernel is usually provided by the vendor of the hardware you're using. The SDK is comprised of Qt, HTML5, and pretty much any other language Linux supports, and it's extendable in several ways, which control the session management and more features I'm going to explain later. Plus, the cloud solution is everything you need for building, cross-compiling, deploying your applications, and even remote controlling your appliances and devices. Of course, our SDK stack builds on top of the richest SDK we have, which is Qt. So all of this solution is built from the ground up in Qt 5 and supports both Qt 5 and Qt 4 out of the box for application development, of course. What's the goal? The goal we have is creating the new generation of connected devices and embedded automation appliances uh, powered by this kind of devices plus the applications that you developers can write. Of course, this is aimed both to uh, the average developer who wants to play around with his board uh, in his free time, but most of all to corporations building either applications or full products based on top of embedded boards. So let's have a look at how easy it is. When I mean simple, I mean QML simple. So we thought about the easiest way for somebody to start an application in Qt, and we resorted to the most easy thing we have in Qt, which is QML. So what you see here is everything you need to describe an application when you develop for Himera. So suppose you have a main QML file in which your application is described, and here we are talking about plain QML in Qt 5 or Qt 4. The only thing you need to do is instantiate a new file, which is using, of course, the settings plugin we deploy, describing your application as it is by uh, application ID, which is usually a reverse domain syntax. So if you ever use Dbus, you're familiar with this already. The name of the application, description, version, and simply your resource files you want to include. You can describe in this way QML applications, C++ applications, and pretty much everything you need to to start up your, um, your appliances on the device. More than that, there's also some other features I'm not going to show here because the time is short, which allow you to define specific permissions or behaviors of your application straight into the configuration file. And of course, we built Himer on top of several concepts. The first one is abstraction. When we mean abstraction, we mean on several layers. The first one, of course, is the hardware. We are not tied in any way to any sort of hardware device. The hardware is something we remove and insert into the middleware depending on the client's requirements. Uh, Himera is built on top of MER, which is a very popular open source project, which is used also by Sailfish and Yola uh, for building custom distributions, of which Himera is one. Uh, we brought the concept of a hardware adaptation and put it to the next level by supporting both board specific code like kernel drivers and similar things, plus, for example, EGLFS hooks for Qt and many other features, for example, GStreamer plus OpenMax for supporting out-of-the-box multimedia decoding and encoding using the Qt APIs. So everything is done for you in a transparent way without thinking about your hardware. And moreover, all of the components of the middleware are replaceable in a very easy way. So we are usually shipping a set of very stable and well-tested middleware solutions, but you can plug in your own libraries, your own replacements for, for example, Qt or any other parts of the middleware stack and replace everything with your own components, which you can maintain even yourself. 
The second one is uh, the concept of a single appliance. Uh, we call a single appliance those kind of devices, for example, a touchscreen, like a domotics panel, where you have to do one thing and do it well, which is usually one of the best use cases for embedded. So all of the SDK and all of the management of the session and the whole solution is built around the concept of having one single application at a time, which of course is not a strict requirement, but it's what we do better, and make it run in the best way possible. So this led us to create what we call a mission. A mission is nothing but a Linux session on steroids. How do I define a mission? Well, surprisingly, QML again. So mission control is our main, not Apple, of course, and not even telepathy, but mission control is so fancy these days that we thought about using it as well. Mission control is the middleware component which pilots entirely the whole life cycle of your device at runtime. So the QML plugin you see here is exactly the same as before, and allows you to define a set of missions, which are nothing but your own sessions on the device. I just defined one here for uh, matters of space, in which you simply describe the name of the mission, the mode in which it, it's going to run on. For example, here is single appliance means it's going to display something on screen. We have, for example, a headless mode, which allows you to create a mission without any video features. Any features you want to provide, and in this case, we want, for example, to enable the audio and the video features. This part is very important and a really amazing feature because you are able, first of all, only to give the application the permission it needs in a specific sandbox. And most of all, for example, Pulse Audio will not be brought up unless you enable it explicitly. This allows us to have a footprint on startup with a, a GL display brought on of roughly 20 megabytes. In fact, the minimum requirements we ask for is 32 megabytes of RAM on the device whenever you have to show graphical applications. And this is also thanks to the fact that we only enable what's really needed for your appliance. Uh, the allow updates is part of the concept of uh, having the missions being uh, not disturbed by the outside. For example, we do have a built-in OTA system for updates, but it's not going to be triggered unless your mission explicitly says that you are able to update in that context. For example, a very useful use case in this regard is creating a production mission and a maintenance mission. Suppose, for example, you have a domotics panel. You want to place the first appliance, so the user interface, the real user interface, in a single mission, production, for example, and for the installer who's going to come and maintain your panel or change things in your configuration, you want to create a separate application running in its own sandbox with its own privileges and enclosed in its own uh, jail box, let's call it like this, for example, allowing updates. So in this case, you're guaranteed that nothing will ever, ever interrupt the workflow of your users but whenever the installer comes up, he will be able to do some uh, deep modifications to the OS itself. But moving forward, we have what we call Start, which is our cloud solution. Now, Start is called like this because it's really a starting point for everything innovative we put into, into the OS. The workflow is quite simple. Uh, you start coding, and then you push your code, for example, to a repository, or you create a tarball. This repository is usually monitored by Start, this uh, nice nifty cloud you see in the middle. Start automatically triggers a remote compilation of your software, a remote packaging of your software. This happens without you doing any single line of uh, packaging logic. This is all done for you by the QML definition you've seen at the uh, beginning of this presentation. And out of your packages, it regularly builds images for your board, depending on what you specified on the software stack. These images are then downloadable by yourself or your testers or your deployment unit or whatever else and can be straight burned onto an SD card. So the whole development and automation cycle is really, really made easy by this process. And it's good for testers, deployments, and even developers. Because of course you can do separate branches of your packages and your images. In the same regard, your packaging will also take part in the OTA process, which is highly configurable and will, be, will allow your device to upgrade when it connects to the internet. But it's not only that. We also expose, or better, allow the user to expose uh, web endpoints, REST and SOAP in this regard, uh, from your own applications, which means that your applications are connected by default. You can define your own set of APIs and protocols, which can then be accessed by the outside in two very different ways. The first one is, of course, in an internal network. So in the Demotics case, for example, you might have different controllers which are interacting with your main, uh, with your main device always controlled by an authority, which you can always define by yourself. And the second one, which is the most interesting, is again throughout Start. So Start can actually be a proactive mirror of your own APIs on the device, allowing you to, in, to engage a, a peer-to-peer-like connection with your devices remotely, 
which includes, of course, being controlled by a smartphone, uh, an HTML5 application on the web, or whatever you name. So you always have uh, concrete access to your devices, and you can always strive for building your own remote control applications throughout this SDK. Now, uh, of course, we build everything with the stability and support in mind. So we aim to support every release for at least seven years, and all of the system is stable and well-tested on a variety of hardware reference platforms, including industrial silicon from TI and Freescale as reference platforms. Now, if anybody is looking like Fry, uh, the good news is actually that we're going to come out in late October, early November. So uh, follow us. We are not very active on the social networks up to now, but we will be very soon, and we will release updates as we go. Or if you're really interested and want to know more about this, my email address is there, which is also my name, and given this is a friendly competition, if you want to support this project and what we do, remember to vote for this talk. Thank you, everyone. <laughs>